Hello guys and welcome today. Today I'm showing you something awesome. I'm showing how we can use these humble blocks, cauldrons in redstone. Yes, you heard me right, it's cauldrons in redstone. So let's quickly get on to what I'm talking about. So, most recently I've been quite interested in redstone computers and how they work. And I've been thinking about how we can actually store data in Minecraft. And uh, originally I thought, well, you know, this, this, this was the most obvious thing to me. Because, I mean, these are both pushable pistons, you know, you've got the obvious this on and off. However, these do affect redstone around them, which just makes it a bit of a pain to make any sort of way to store this data. Because it would just, it's, you have to make something big and clunky and it's not great. So I started thinking about blocks with two different states. And how we could actually detect those two different states. I thought, well, we could use buds, but... Again, buds are a bit unwieldy and aren't really tileable, so I've had to think about something else. And then I realised we could use cauldrons, because cauldrons can take a comparator out from them. So if they're full, they give off a signal, if they're empty, they don't give off a signal. And best of all, they don't power any redstone around them, so you can make nice, compact ways to move them. So here it is, guys, the version 1 of my cauldron mover. It's, um, it's not great, let's put it that way. Uh, the basis was formed though of having a two tick pulse coming in and three ticks between each piston retracting or moving, but um, apart from that it was a bit shabby to be honest, I mean, for what I forgot where I should take an output from it, I mean I didn't leave a space for an output from it, which was uh, not great. It isn't something that's easily tileable, because like I'm powering things here with torches, and it just wasn't what I wanted. It worked, I mean look, you know, if I press the button, it cycles. <gasps> But is, is, is that really the minimum criteria? Because I knew I could do better than this. So here it is guys, this is the basis for all the designs you're going to see today. This is what really got me going and excited about cauldron hard drives. These hard drives, they, they use this sort of piston cycling motion again, which I showed you with a two tick input and then a three tick delay between each piston extending. I even put in a fourth tick here just to be safe because if there's a little bit of lag, the three tick thing just doesn't quite work. However, this thing's good and all. As you can see, I actually left space for us to now take an output from it, and it does, in fact, cycle. However, it's, uh, it's a little bit slow in the whole sort of changing round. It's a bit bulky, and for the fact that it's so sort of unefficient, I mean, we're, we're losing quite a bit of space on a small hard drive like this. I mean, on a large one, it, you don't you feel this loss. However, on a small hard drive like this, you're building something that's relatively large but you're not actually holding much data because of these gaps so I thought this is cool and all have this can only handle odd numbers of data so I need to find something that can hold an even number of data and that's where our next design comes in so here it is guys it's it's very similar and it holds an even amount of data which is really cool the only difference here is the order which I've powered the pistons and as you can see I've powered this top piston and this bottom piston at the same time followed by these two what this makes for is a really snappy transition between the cauldrons when they cycle. It's really nice, quick and efficient, and as well, it's really small as you can see. Only one wider than the actual cauldron array itself. And this is why I really like this one. It holds an even amount of data, which is often what you need. I mean, there are cases where you need odd amounts of data, but this is generally the thing that you want. And it is brilliant, and I love it a lot. So this is if this is the one that I would recommend for you guys to use. However, I thought if people did want an odd amount of data, that's not great. We need to find a better way of doing that, and that is where my next design comes in. So here, guys, is the last design of my cauldron hard drive. It's an odd amount of data, but it's super efficient. You can see there's only one gap here instead of the three in the other one. As you can see, it's again lovely and quick. Bonk and uh, it wouldn't actually use much space wide. I mean, width-wise, you don't need very much extra space. I've just shown here that, in fact, you can wire over the top if you're pushing for width, but you don't mind going out the back. However, for ease, I've just brought this from around the side because this is so much easier. Um, so that is it for these cauldron hard drives as in their actual designs. Last thing I want to quickly talk about is what are they best suited for use for? Um, so now we're going to be talking about what can you actually use these cauldron hard drives for because they aren't like your conventional hard drive they they do have this thing of putting the values and you putting them in an order and then cycling through that order i mean you can swap it around so they don't 
However, for simplicity's sake, I suggest use it for something like that where the data has to go around in a loop. So for me personally, that means that these things are going to be best for things like clocks and timers. Um, well, you could probably use them for music if you had this connected to a clock and have these put up for different notes. Um, but uh, that, that's really it in terms of their uses. I mean, they're quite limited, but I've actually thought about it and I actually think you can expand the uses over that. You know, those are the obvious uses, however, I've actually started making a redstone computer that uses these things because these things are great and I really love them. But uh, just before we go, I just want to quickly talk about how you write to them and it's really simple. You simply whack a some water in the cauldrons, obviously that gives you an output, and then to break, like to get rid of that data, you simply click and get rid of the data, and then shift click a new cauldron in there. And uh, the shift clicking just allows you to place a cauldron on another cauldron, because normally if I break this one here, it just it, it, it tries to fill the cauldron up with a cauldron. Um, but anyway, guys, hopefully you like today's showcase. Um, you know. I hope I made a good video to be honest, you know, give it a like, a favourite, a subscribe, you know, comments especially what I want, you know, comments uh, really keep me going, um, so if you have anything to talk about this, any other ideas, you know, anything, anything at all, please tell me in the description below, but uh, that's been it guys, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys another time, this has been Redstone Open Door and I'm out.